Dude, if we don't get a statue or something, I'm going to be pissed. Broadcasting live from an airstream somewhere in Tornado Alley, bringing you the people, places, and stories from the Panhandle to the Red River. This is your Only in Oklahoma show. And welcome to the show. Today we're discussing some activities in the state of Oklahoma during the month of July. I'm Brett. And I am Harley. So I reluctantly at first, I was invited to go to this thing called the Red Barn Market. It's on Southwest 134th Street in Western. Because mm-hmm. I thought, okay. Because I've heard some things about it. I was okay. like, I don't know. It sounds it sounds like a like a miniature version of a fair of the heart. Oh, you were thinking there's only so much candles and girly stuff that you can handle. And bejeweled hats that say, too blessed to be stressed, or tumblers that can be custom made to say that. I was wrong. This thing is right up my alley. We first started, there's a little bit of some outdoor tents. People kind of set up, uh, selling their, you know, kind of like garage sale style stuff. Mm -hmm. And then they've got three separate buildings that are all antiques. Okay. Dude. There's some blasts from the past, stuff that we would remember. Yeah. Stuff that our grandparents would remember. All kinds of stuff. But one of the coolest things I found out there was I met these folks from uh, what's called the Cedar Bear. Okay. Too cool. They do chainsaw carving. Yeah. And uh, they make little gnomes. They're really cool. They paint. They're even painted. They make mushrooms. They make some little welcome bears. They've got a really cool table that they tried to get me to buy that I knew that I wouldn't be able to buy. You know, I have a 12 foot tree stump in my front yard that is awaiting someone to carve. Somebody to carve it, yeah. Well, the guy, Joe, was a truck driver for years. Mm-hmm. Him and him, his old lady, man, they just uh, carving up cedar, doing a bang up job. They've only been doing it for a year. That's awesome. He went, he saw somebody do it, decided he wanted to try it, and he, I mean, Caught the bug, and they've been doing it ever since. But that is crazy. I spent a lot of time talking to them, and uh, we'll definitely post a link uh, to their Facebook page in the show. But it was pretty cool. It happens every third Sunday of the month. And it, trust me, if you're in, somebody that's into vintage toys, vintage, they've even got some some local artisans that make jewelry and, and clothing. There's all kinds of stuff there. And just this little, not a corner lot. As a matter of fact, the, the original house, building on the front was a house at one time and you can even go mm-hmm. through and kind of tell yeah and then there was some you know different other uh, other buildings there and things like that but uh yeah tons of fun I, uh, what i ended up buying was an antique unless you consider dvds antique of course i found a bunch of horror movies that were two for a dollar but i bought i don't know a stack about 24 inches tall and i've got to figure out where to catalog those suckers but that's what i did this weekend it sounds like a lot of fun well if you're looking for something to do That's not every third Sunday. There are a ton of events happening in July. A bunch. For starters, and we didn't include any specific Independence Day celebrations. There's kind of a given. There's so many. Everybody's got one. Everybody's doing something. So if you're you're looking for something to do, I promise you, just head over to Travel OK. You will find about 654 different... Fourth of July celebrations or, in the state of Oklahoma. I would have said one thousand seven hundred and seventy-six. You might find that many, but six hundred and fifty-four for sure. Our first event is very patriotic, especially yep. if you like Cajun culture. Aye. The Cajun <laughs> Festival in Grove, Oklahoma is happening on July second mm. at the Grove Civic Center. If you want to experience the Cajun country but you don't want to go outside of the state of oklahoma they absolutely have you covered i bet it's a it's i bet it's a lot hotter to go do the cajun festival in louisiana right now i think it's i don't know if it's hotter but i bet you it feels hotter i don't like humidity that's a wet that's a wet heat (laughs) isn't that what they say (laughs) i do have a question for you though what do you call a cajun that never tells the truth uh I don't know. Jumbo Laya. Jumbo Laya. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. But this festival has become a major event in the Grand Lake area, and it's really devoted to good family entertainment, mm-hmm. which I think we are both in that mode right we now. Are. We are. We're a, we are 
right in the thick of family entertainment. We are. Uh, but you can shop for handcrafted jewelry, American Indian art, among numerous arts and crafts vendors. You can feast on chicken or sausage j- jambalaya. And they have the uh, traditional fair food, so hamburgers, mm-hmm. hot dogs, all that sort of stuff. Country, Cajun, and patriotic music playing live all day long. Zada go, baby. You know it. You got to let the good times roll, my boy. <laughs> this you, would be right up my you alley. Almost went a little Jamaican on your Cajun accent. Yeah, there, man. So. <laughs> we, uh, Cajun. We, we're Cajun. Super cheap to get in, though. $5 yeah. admission. Kids are free. That is a real bargain. Yeah. And if you've never been to the Grand Lake area, it's another one of those top 10 destinations for sure. Absolutely. Um, and we'll have a link in the show notes, but if you're interested, GrandLakeFestivals.com is going to be your source of info. So next up, the Blackberry Festival, July 8th and 9th in McLeod, Oklahoma. I love, matter of fact, I have two jars of Blackberry jam right now, one at home and one at work. I absolutely love Blackberries. I love it. I love it. The only problem I have with blackberries... Seeds. No, no, I love blackberry seeds. Yeah. The only problem I have with blackberries, they don't keep very long. No, they don't. You really gotta, you gotta eat it. You gotta pick them and eat them. <laughs> yeah. But the McLeod Blackberry Festival began in the 40s, and it is one of the oldest continual festivals in the state of Oklahoma, and actually the absolute oldest food festival in the state. Is that right? Yeah. Golly, that, I would think that... I don't know, what would be another staple food you would think would go farther back than a blackberry, maybe? Right. The Maze Festival? <laughs> maybe. maybe. <laughs> Blackberries were originally a celebration of the local farm crop. The festival then combined with the annual town picnic to form mm-hmm. an even larger event. In 1949, the McLeod Blackberry Growers Association and the McLeod Chamber of Commerce sent a crate of berries via overnight air freight to President Harry Truman. Wow. He said they were, and I quote, the best he had ever tasted, Mm. and declared McLeod to be the blackberry capital of the world. Of the world? Of the world. I don't know if he has the authority, or if he had the authority to declare something the capital of a, a capital of the world, but he did it. He's the president of the United States. Yeah, but that's not the world. Well, yeah, but. So he overstepped his boundaries as far as I'm concerned. But this festival draws tens of thousands of attendees from across the nation every year. You can basically get any type of blackberry-related food that you would ever think Mm. of. From blackberry cobbler jam, snow cones, funnel cakes, like blackberry-themed drinks. They'll have blackberry wine, blackberry craft beer. You know what's funny? You you can take anything anything good for you. And somehow make it better when it's worse for you. A funnel cake topped with blackberries? What are you going to do? Pick the blackberries off and eat them and toss the funnel cake? Yeah, absolutely Hell no. not. Uh, the festival also includes a lot uh, carnival rides, craft vendors, food trucks, a huge parade through downtown, live music, and a huge fireworks display. So again, hey, you're still getting you're getting bang for your buck. Absolutely. As far as some very unique events. You've got the Cobbler Gobbler, <laughs> That's which your, is an that's eating you, contest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. They've got a blackberry baking contest with prizes. So if you have a recipe, you might uh, see if you can enter that. Well, my question for you is, you said you love blackberry seeds. But I promise you, if you were in the blackberry eating comp- uh, contest, you would you would hate every seed. Because I guarantee you... The seeds would, would no, play dude, your body. Dude, I'm telling you, when you're in an eating contest, you're not chewing. I know, and that's the other thing. If you're, if you're somebody that eats fast, I can tell you what happens to your body when you don't chew. To top it all off, outside of you and your weird blackberry seed fetish, uh, to top it all off, they have fresh, free blackberries available at the pavilion until they run out. If it's the blackberry capital of the world, they probably shouldn't run out. Just saying. I don't know. We'll see. Tens of thousands of Tens. people show I don't know. up. They it, run out of blackberries. Just people, just people walking around with just, just black, black face, black. like purple, <laughs> right stains all <laughs> yeah. over them. Yeah, I'm uh, thinking that's but... not the place to wear all white. No, probably not. I'm, no. I'm just guessing. Yeah, but if you want more information, check out the website mccloudchamber.com. Third on my list is the third annual Oki Hillbilly Hand Fishing Tournament in Nawada, Oklahoma. Sounds kind of like noodling to me. 
It is Noodlin'. It's happening on July 9th. It is a full day of events and activities for all ages. Obviously, there's going to be some noodling. They'll have food trucks, local vendors, games, and mm-hmm. live entertainment throughout the day. They have a cornhole tournament. They have an outhouse <laughs> race. What? I do not know what an outhouse race is, but oh, I want to see it. Yeah. They have homemade ice cream churn-off contest, a noodle eating contest, and this one I think we should probably enter. What? The men's wet t-shirt contest. Yeah, I'm telling you right now, I'm at attention about 90% of the time. I think I would take it. You think? Yeah. I think dude, I'm I'm saying it's probably a toss up between us. Yeah, my yeah. I'm I I look like I'm in the cold most of the time, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well the main event though, teams compete to take home top prizes in the noodling tournament, and prizes are given out for first, second, third place teams at the final weigh in. So if you want more information though, we'll include a link to their Facebook page for the event. And coming up after the break, we might just have a couple of events to help you keep cool. So one of the things that I've noticed, all of the events Mm -hmm. that I pulled this month all have t-shirts. Yeah. It's super important. Like, dude, I'm sorry, but I, my personal opinion, festival t-shirts are as important as band t-shirts. Well, hell, I brought a couple of t-shirts for our swag bag. Not only did it have the event on it, it had all their sponsors on them. Mm-hmm. I mean, I really think, for me, if I could afford to just hand out t-shirts instead of business cards that they're going to go toss, it would definitely be t-shirts all day long. Dude, it's literally like somebody going to a business, hey, you know, Bob's heat and air. Can I buy a billboard right. and stick it in my front yard of yeah, your company? Absolutely. <laughs> like, sure. Whatever, yeah. yeah, whatever works, buddy. And if you need a whole bunch of people running around in your billboards, yep. then you need to reach out to our friend Ronnie Davenport. He's a firefighter, a screen printer, lawnmower, pull, uh, nuclear pull. Phys- physicist. I mean, he cl- he cleans pools, his own pool, really well. He does a good job at it. <laughs> uh, well, I don't know if you can get a free quote for pool cleaning, but if you're looking for t-shirts or designs, he's your guy. Give him a call, though, 405-517-2174. Or find him on the web at tailboardapparel.com. All right, we're headed back to Grand Lake this time, July 16th, for Aquapalooza at Grand Lake. That's in Afton, Oklahoma. Now, it's it to me, I think this launch, this is the official launch of the most epic summer party. Imagine a music festival that you just pull instead of you ain't work, you don't have to drag around your lawn chair or your blanket just pull up in a boat. It's the area's largest water concert and raft event. Dude, for starters, I love Grand Lake. It's it's gorgeous up there, it's man. It's really pretty. You can see through the water, which not all Oklahoma water has that mm-hmm. that benefit. You can see through the water. It's July, there's no place I want to be other than in the water. Right. And this year, it's going to be red dirt and traditional country music with a raft up during the concert. Now, they will provide, you know those, you've probably seen the the water mats that just kind of, they look like a like a mattress that's about two inches thick. Yeah, no, the kids love those things. They're going to provide that. So you're going to be able to enjoy aquatic toys like noodles while you swim near the makeshift stage. I don't, I don't like it when you say makeshift stage. Well, it's a floating stage. Right. But what what happens when you mix water with... You remember them? I can just see the picture of the... I picture the mayor from Amity Island talking about, yeah, oh, it's going to be great. we got to have a makeshift stage. Whoa, 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 Mr. <laughs> mayor. <laughs> Didn't we try this something like this before? Right where that kid got eaten by the shark. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, you'll be able to re- relax on those mats. But also, uh, within reach of the barge, you may even end up with a giveaway. They're going to give giveaways tossed off the stage. Free stuff. Hopefully it all floats. I it, can't imagine, <laughs> like, if, they, if they're if they using, like, the T-shirt cannons, if they don't hit somebody, that thing's going to be at the bottom of the lake. So, cool thing. You can either anchor your boat there, or they will deliver you to the area. So, you, so you you've got water outside taxi. parking, right. and they'll bring you over, and you just drop in. Or, but here's the one thing that I think that's cool, and maybe maybe I'm overselling it. It's free. No, free is good. So it's and it's open to all ages. Also good. So bring your kids. 
Well, it is held at the point at Grand Lake Aubrey Resort, which is hosting. Uh, it's the 12th annual event. 12 years of doing free concerts on the water. Mm-hmm. It's hard to beat. Thousands of boats are going to be expected in Duck Creek for those coming to Aquapalooza, Grand Lake area by land. Ramps are going to be available on the point for easy access to the water. So if you're going to be dropping your your boat into the water, you'll be able to do that with, with little to no problem. Aquapalooza 2022 is expected to draw in 15,000 partiers from all over the country. Holy crap, that is a lot of people on the water. That is a lot of people. I wonder if they have the like the rafting area and the boating area roped off Ooh, or something. God, I just... Surely they do. So I mean, this is they've been doing this for twelve years. Surely they know their business well enough. I just automatically thought fifteen thousand like people in the See, water. I've got a. I'll tell you what. I got a bunch of questions about this. You got a bunch of questions about this. If you've got a bunch of questions about it, though, check it out at three hundred and sixty grandlake dot com. So we're moving on to something maybe a little bit more less. I just feel danger zone. I hear danger zone when I think of 15,000 people Dude, in the I, water, man. Honestly, I think we are we both have young kids. Yeah, we're thinking we're in parent mode. Parent mode, I 20 agree. years ago, we'd be like, yeah, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, we would have been in it. No, I just I broke my tooth opening a Budweiser. <laughs> right on high five, dude. <laughs> well, let's head to something that's been doing it a lot longer. Longer? Yeah, 72 years to be exact. It's the Indian Hills powwow coming up. July 28th through the 31st going on in OKC. Wow. The OKC Hill, uh, the I Indian, did, what? I didn't realize that we had a powwow that was going on for, I mean, that's almost a century. That's a long time to do it. Yeah, I had no idea. That's a lot um, of history. Yeah, that's, and that's a long time to be doing anything, but it's, it's an excited Native, Amer- exciting Native American gathering that's open free to the public, as nice. always, held outdoors in East OKC. I literally, in, I think they put, kind of put the kibosh on it the last few years, and I've noticed that with a lot of, uh, Native festivals and powwows that during the pandemic, they weren't doing it. They, mm-hmm. Matter of fact, there was a, uh, a Facebook group called the Social Distance Powwow where people would kind of do virtual you know, they'd have a drum section to do live videos. and they do. So it's nice to see that these traditions, I mean, you. I'm sorry, you're not going to cancel a 72-year-old powwow. No, I, it makes me sad, though, that yeah. we missed, missed that for the last few years because it's one of those things. All the Native American traditions yeah. are handed down person to person, person, person. From, through stories. And you can't have big disruptions in that. Yeah, so I'm glad the, that we're back in, back on track. Well, it's going to obviously feature uh, traditional dancing and competitions for all age groups. They're going to have hand game, horseshoe tournaments, which is a big deal. Uh huh. I've never, I've only maybe got a ringer one time. You pretty good at horseshoes? That's a fun game to play. It is. I think it. Isn't the goal to get a ringer? Isn't that what it is? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's it's a, a, depending on how it's played, I'm not 100% sure of the rules that they're using yeah. in this event. But. Well, I'm sure it's pretty, I mean, pretty standard, but. Well, a, 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 a game I think we could both easily play if we had a turtle. Turtle races. They're going to have Dude, turtle races. Have you seen all the turtles on the highways? There's been a lot. I've been dodging turtles left and right. I was driving by. You know where the old uh, Dan Schaefer pastor of Crossroads Cathedral, mm-hmm. his house is on the south side, right by it, what it was. There was a huge, I mean a huge snapping turtle. I'm holding my hands up about 24 inches in circumference. This thing was huge, just trying to cross the street with his mouth open like which Ooh. doesn't really invite help. It doesn't really. <laughs> it doesn't say rescue me. I know that you think you can do this, man. But uh, I wonder yeah. if there are any rules on the, the turtle races. If you come with a twenty-four inch snapping turtle, yeah, you're probably <laughs> you probably win automatically. Yeah, I don't. All the other turtles are hiding. Yeah, like you could. I guess you could put like glasses on it with tape on it, and he could be like a ringer. Like, oh, surely he won't do that well. He's four eyed. <laughs> But they're going to have gourd dances, which are also traditional as well. You can purchase na- authentic Native arts and crafts. And, of course, Indian tacos and other traditional foods will be available as well, as uh, as well as intertribal activities. That's the other thing I like about this particular – it's it's basically a festival of nations, more or less. This particular powwow invites everyone. It's a non – it's non-tribal specific. Non-denominational. Non-denominational. Intertribal. Basically, so okay. anybody anybody can come. I mean, it's free if you got nothing better to do. Hopefully, by J- July twenty eighth through the thirty first, 
it won't feel like it's the summer of on Mars. It's I mean it's stupid hot. It is stupid hot. I've got as a matter of fact I have an end yet my my tribe's festival is coming up pretty coming up pretty soon I'll be going to that. So Awesome. Sounds like a lot of fun. Well, if you need info on this, I mean, Jiminy Christmas, they've been doing it for 72 years. If you can't find information, I'm sure it's out there, but we'll put a link in our show notes. Awesome. So I mentioned yoga one freaking time. Yes. We've talked about yoga periodically mm-hmm. thro- throughout the years. Well, coming up, we've got the big um, yoga retreat island <laughs> on July 29th through the 31st in Loma, Oklahoma. Um, I don't know if they would appreciate they that. They probably wouldn't. They probably they would make me do hot yoga until I died. But if you want to relax and reach a sense of inner peace at the big um yoga retreat, <laughs> it's going to be held at Quartz Mountain State Park and Lodge uh, in Lone Wolf, Oklahoma. You ever been down there to Quartz Mountain? I have. It's gorgeous. Many moons ago, they used to have an art camp that you could go to at Quartz Mountain. They still do. They, they do. I know it burnt down. I just didn't know if they ever brought it back again. I think it's actually held at the lodge now. Uh, okay. I was talking to the director, I believe, Yeah. Uh, when I was down there with Connor. Oh, really? Yeah. And we were looking at the art. And Well, if you want to immerse yourself in nature and disconnect from your normal routine, which probably just means your cell phone. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you, anything you can do to unplug to unplug yeah, 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 is yeah. huge. Turn off, was it turn off, turn on, tune out? <laughs> I, just but, in general, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. telling you, I instantane, as soon as I get out of cell phone range, my heart rate drops three or four beats a minute. Oh, absolutely. Well, if you want to book a stay uh, at the lodge, you can do that too while you're down there. Retreat, retreat goers are going to have a fun yoga weekend with workshops and hangouts, acro yoga. Stand up paddle boarding. That's yeah, no, I love paddle boarding. I'm not I'm not a big stand up paddle boarder though because it's hard. Yeah. Like it the looks, core muscles, it looks easy. Yeah, I can I just picture you kind of just doing the wibble wobble. It looks easy, but in Oklahoma, you've always got a twenty mile an hour wind with gusts coming out of the opposite yeah. direction at thirty miles an hour. Mm-hmm. And so just when you think you've got the whole balance thing down. A gust of wind knocks you right off. And you beef it. Yeah, right off the board. Well, every day they will have sunrise yoga promptly at sunrise. I'm sure. No pressure, man. Just show up. I don't think it's like promptly. It's like, hey, man, I'll see you when you get there, man. You're not a big sunrise sunset guy, are you? I am. The problem is, is they're both obstructed by suburbia. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you. I got to drive five. I got to drive 10 minutes to see. The sun, the sunset. The kids and, I, they, kids and I went out on Father's Day kayaking. We just went to the local lake. We did it a couple hours before sunset. And I sat on the beach and just watched the sunset. It's yeah. gorgeous. And I, I'm i all about it. Yeah, I, uh, I need to get back into doing something like that. Because yeah, I think really, it, it, not to, we'll get back to the yoga thing, but I really think you got to have something to kind of recharge I We're just, just drained, aren't we? Yeah, I just think just flushing out the garbage, the even, Netflix and the even for a couple Facebook. hours. Yeah, yeah. Just, put it on, just put it on silent for a little while. But you'll leave feeling refreshed and recharged after this adventurous weekend. Now, it's Sequoia State Park, which you're going to be doing a little. We're heading down there this weekend. A yes. mini a mini adventure uh, this weekend. Uh, it's it's the home of the the big home yoga retreat. So you'll get to go up there and get a preview. Of where you could be doing like the Sequoia low- State Park is it, gorgeous. Yeah, I've, I've never been, but I've heard a lot of really a lot of beautiful things about it. But it's an hour from Tulsa too, so if you want to go hang out, do some yoga, and then head back into town and do a little, I don't know, what other kind of medicines, what other medicines you're in for for the weekend. They'll provide everything you need to let go and relax this weekend. Your pass includes breakfast and dinner on Saturday, all the amazing workshops and classes, access to the pool. Mm-hmm. And playtime at the lake space is limited, though. Yeah, no, I think it sounds like a lot of fun, and if it, it really does, I, I'm just kind of joking around, but yeah, I'm I'm all for it. I mean, I really am. I really need to find an insider in the yoga scene because I think I would love yoga, but I'm know terrified of being the new guy in the yoga class. The things that I'm terrified of are just. I don't want to pass gas by accident. I'll be honest. 
you get relaxed. I'm just worried about being the guy. Or being the guy that's like, it's his first time, and they're like, Brett, are you there? Are you with us? I'm like, uh, yeah. Like, I can't do the lotus pose. How about just like the low, the lowest pose? (laughs) (laughs) You go into class and then wake up 55 minutes later, like, yeah, you passed out as soon as we did downward dog. (laughs) Yeah, you did downward, yeah, you were a dead dog. That's another thing, though. I'm really, I really have... Like the the concept of me being more relaxed than my baseline. Yeah. Like I might just go to sleep and never wake up. Yeah. Like that seems like a waste of money on my part if I go in and just pass out in the corner. What I will say uh, to quote Joe Rogan, he does talk about doing. He says he always smokes a little before he stretches or does any type of yoga or anything like that because it just enhances the workout. Me, I've done yoga a few times in the last couple of weeks at home, and I'm telling you, man, there's something when you start stretching into it, and it, it just does something different. I wake up sore mm-hmm. because I probably should wake up sore, but my sciatica, yeah, I hardly have any trouble with it. Awesome, back still hurts. I've got some some bulging discs, but it does relieve that. So I mean, I think it's cool that they have they have this this festival. I mean, no, cool. it sounds like a lot of fun. Well, if you're looking to get into Downward Dog at Quartz Mountain, go to BigOmeYogaRetreat.com. Cool. Hang yeah. on. But more importantly, if you go to any of these things, let them know we sent you. Please. You're not going to get a discount. You might get a discount. You might. You keep saying they're not going to get a discount. I know, but it's like it's not like we're... Mention only in OK Show and get ten percent off your first funnel cake. Like it, you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm just saying. No, you mention only in OK. You tell them that the only in OK Show sent, sent you, you, and you'll get your sixth funnel cake for free. The sixth one. Yeah, I With, think that's the way it works. And it's got to be covered in blackberry, whatever they put on it. Probably would be like a blackberry reduction <laughs> or combo. blackberry ice combo. cream. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, but definitely let them know that the guys from the Only an OK Show sent you. Please. Even the yoga people, they're probably mad at us right now. Well, this has been the Only an OK Show. I am Harley. And I'm Shaggy. And we're out of here. Peace. Still hadn't finished Stranger Things yet? No. Is I he, feel like you do he that coming to through? Me. Yeah, who? I swear to God. I can hear him, but Is that's... He coming uh, through no. audibly? You still haven't finished Stranger Things yet? Did you see my map? I think it's cool. When did you get that? Amber got it for me for Father's Day. Did you get all the cool stuff? I got a text for Father's Day. And oh, I got to go to a movie, too. And, oh, I did that. This is a thing. 40th anniversary on Sunday. The thing. Oh, the thing. I thought you were taking me. Dude, I told you when I was going. I said, hey, man, we're going. I think I'm going on Sunday. No, but, you... I well, what happened was is I wasn't going to buy the tickets. And then, um, yeah, that's because, not, well, that no, no, no. not what was discussed. Well, I didn't get tickets because I thought, and then kind of last minute, she went to go see, do something. And she's like, hey, by the way, I bought you, I bought, uh, bought us tickets for the thing on Sunday. But apparently, from everybody in the, the horror group, they put the wrong, like they had a cropped version, like they they cropped part of the. I didn't notice it, but I guess it's noticeable. But they cropped a bunch of it out and put the wrong aspect ratio. Fathom Events came out with a statement said, "Sorry, so the one that they're playing tonight is the one that in its original mm. form." That's still probably my favorite movie. I can't see anything wrong with it. I sat next to a guy, kind of a young guy. They have yeah. tears. No, so here, I, I said, so I walk into the theater, first of all, and there's a there's a couple of us wearing T-shirts, a um, couple of guys wearing T-shirts, and they see me, and they go, nice shirt, and I said, pointing at them, is, you know, do you, is it like wearing a concert shirt to a, the band that you're going to see? A lot of people frown upon you wearing, like, the band you're going to see's T-shirt to the show. They think, I don't know. See, what I do when I go to... You're going to say, when I go, I just don't give a shit. No, when I go to see a band, what I do is go in, 
go to the lobby, buy my t-shirt, then take boom. off the t-shirt that I'm wearing, throw it in the garbage, and then put wear. on the t-shirt. Yeah. Can you afford to do that with gas prices like that? No. I've never done that either. Um, can we tell a potty story? A potty story? I'll tell the story, and if you don't, if it can't stay, take it out. Okay. So yesterday, I go to the restroom. Do the math. One plus one is two. I'm in the stall. Almost done. All of a sudden, I hear... Hang the, on, is this a devil's handshake story? No. Okay. It's worse. Worse. Okay. I don't know. Okay, go ahead. So I hear somebody come in the bathroom. Okay, I thought it might be the maintenance guy coming in. He's a nice guy, but he's deaf, so I don't know if he could hear. I wasn't I wasn't noisy anyway, but I don't know. Does he do a shoe check? Whatever. All of a sudden, I hear kind of a clang, clang, clang. I'm like, no, that doesn't sound like his maintenance car. Next thing you know, the stall next to me. Somebody goes in the stall, creep, 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 creeping along. I see a ladder. What? Okay. Okay, continue. All of a sudden, the ladder opens. I'm frozen because I'm like, I could, I could hurry. You know what I mean? I'm in that. And next thing you know, I hear an ascension up the ladder. <laughs> I'm sitting. <laughs> I've found a position where I'm covering myself. Oh and I'm my literally God. like, you could put me in a flower bed and you would think I was like a garden gnome. Like, I was frozen. <laughs> so the guy continues to go up. I'm thinking over my, the top. Howdy, neighbor. I mean, what do I say? <laughs> I was mortified, so I was looking up, like you know, kind of like I'm hi, but mm-hmm. without saying it, I was so frozen I couldn't say don't don't mind me. Yeah. Or so he goes up, installs a light bulb. So here's the thing: before he comes in there, it's dimly lit. There's one light bulb over here. It's perfectly fine. He puts a puts in a new light bulb up here. All of a sudden, not only am I in there, he's at the top. He continues to work. I'm like, I'm literally trying not to breathe. He puts oh the light bulb God. in, and I think he realized, oh, sh-, because he puts the light bulb in, calmly walks down the ladder, doesn't take the ladder out. I know he's done, because that's the only only light bulb in there. It needs to be changed. Leaves. I finish up. He's nowhere to be seen. I think he got in his car and left. <laughs> I mean, I really think he's like... This ain't worth it, man. I got to pay union dues for this. Like, it was, I was mortified. But I was just so frozen that my body, when I was done, when I thawed out, I was just like, I was, my body hurt. But I just didn't know what else to do. Uh, What do you do? The only thing that would have topped that is if the guy would have been sitting on top of the ladder and like, I like to do it from, I like to dive bomb him. Hey, but yeah. (laughs) As in hanging. Uh, you tell me, bud. You're the one hanging light bulbs. But yeah, dude, that was... Uh, I like to bring a ladder. I don't like to touch the seat, so... <sighs> yeah. I like to hover. <laughs> wow. So you didn't do any good. You didn't put any fourth... You put up... You stayed away from the Fourth of July shit. Uh, technically, not. Oh, because one of them goes through. The Cajun Festival is... And there are a couple others that have fireworks and such. You know, little Medi Park down there is starting to do floating. Yes, I did know that. They have come that, a long way in the last three years. The last three years. Population 400. Ooh, big time. A 25% increase since 2010. Cool. Yeah, they've come a long way. All right. Three, two, one. All right. Three, two, one.